Hello, Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com here. Going to take a look at Hurricane Irma. It is about 12.45 a.m. Eastern Time now on Tuesday, September 5th, 2017. And if we take a look at the 11 o'clock advisory package info, just to get a base of where to start from, pressure 943 millibars. The winds are 140 miles per hour, so that's terrifying. Uh, that's a real problem. Uh, it really is. And latitude 16.7 we need this to go up badly. We need that latitude number to increase and the longitude 55.6 west. And the good news is at least it's moving west at 13 miles per hour. Remember what we talked about earlier in terms of the bearing on the compass? So let's look and see right here. Luckily, uh, it is moving now at 270. Uh, earlier we were at 265. Now we are at 270. And we want this number to go up to 280 or 285 or so, uh, so that it'll gain some latitude. 16.7 north is still too low, and it could clip and go over some of the islands with its core of those 140 mile per hour winds. And if we scroll down here to the discussion and 48 hour outlook, this is the area right here that interests me the most. Hurricane force winds now expanding up to 45 miles from the center. Tropical storm force winds still at 140 miles away from that center. All right, so let's take a look at the track map here from the Hurricane Center. And you can tell there's the large tropical storm force wind field and then the smaller but still substantial and growing hurricane force wind field. And then you have the cone of uncertainty here. And the general idea is that this passes very close, if not over, parts of the northeastern Caribbean Sea Islands and then skirting north of the Greater Antilles here through the Bahamas, very close to the tip of Cuba, uh, the north coast of Cuba, I should say, uh, towards the Florida Straits over here. And so this is becoming an increasing concern for not just the United States over here and the Florida Keys and southern Florida, but certainly interest in the Dominican Republic with the center that close, you can bet, uh, the possibility of hurricane force winds, but certainly tropical storm force winds. And that's not really the issue here, okay? The category doesn't matter as much as the overall impact. And people have to really start understanding that, that it's powerful, and it's got a, a, an incredible amount of wind energy with it, no doubt. But the rest of the hazards cannot be ignored. The storm surge, the battering waves... Uh, the swells that this is going to send out towards these places and eventually reaching the coast up here over the next few days. But, you know, areas like the Dominican Republic, the north coast here, this is some mountainous terrain and heavy rainfall from the large circulation could cause catastrophic flooding. And that's always an issue. And the same is the case uh, here for eastern Cuba. There's some tall mountains down here. So while it might barrel through with its core, of terrifying Category 4 winds, and hopefully that's all they get to. The rest of the areas to the south, there are going to be major problems. And this goes on up again very close to Cuba. Um, and the track guidance probably falling in between a lot of these different models. And this is going to fluctuate north or south depending on what the guidance envelope shows. But this is what we're looking at by 2 p.m. Saturday in a position to really threaten Florida and, of course, it's, as I mentioned, bringing a lot of ill effects to the rest of the greater Antilles. Looking at the satellite infrared shot this evening, uh, very well organized hurricane, deep convection wrapping all around that center of circulation there, and then this darker gray starting to show up, showing me that it's off the scale almost here. This is ridiculous. Some of those cloud tops probably minus 70, minus 80 degrees Celsius, way, way up high in the atmosphere, probably producing some lightning and ice crystals. And the hurricane hunters will report on that as they are in and out, flying the missions to sample what's happening with Irma. And uh, you notice, too, where this latitude line is. Uh, there's 17 degrees north latitude right there as I draw on it, the best of my ability to keep it straight. And you can see a lot of these islands over here still remain north of that line, so Irma's going to have to gain some latitude here to come across like that and keep the core away 
from those islands, and time is starting to run out, unfortunately. Uh, furthering the intensification, I show this often. This map is on our app, and, is, uh, and is, it's also available on our subscription service for our subscribers, but I do show it here. Uh, the increase in ocean heat content just going to go up from here, and we need to address these things because it has room to intensify, and it could get even stronger. These things called eye wall replacement cycles, which are not very well understood, will dominate the intensity process from time to time. As an inner eye wall starts to develop a ring of deep thunderstorms around the core, and then it contracts, choking off the inner eye wall, and then it collapses and a new eye wall develops, reaches its maturity, maybe it contracts, and the hurricane gets even stronger. It's an interesting process and it just depends on when it happens in terms of the state of the core as it passes your area. But we don't really need to worry about that too much. We just need to be thinking about preparedness, saving lives, and hopefully mitigating property damage down in the region. So a quick geography lesson on what's what. The U.S. and British Virgin Islands, uh, Anguilla, and um, then we have St. Bart Bartolome here, uh, St. Kitts, Nevis, Montserrat, Guadalupe, the butterfly-shaped one, Antigua and Barbuda, uh, and then in the U.S. Virgin Islands, you have St. Croix, this is St. Thomas, and then we have the island of Vieques over here, then of course, Puerto Rico. And so now that we understand that, let's take a look at these graphics that the developers at Hurricane Pro, we partner with them to provide video discussions for that app's user base. Uh, their developer sent me these screenshots, so this is the 11 o'clock position, and if we just move through here, you can see where it goes along uh, to tomorrow. This will be valid at 8 a.m. Eastern Time. And you can see these islands over here starting to show up with the opacity. There's some there. There's St. Martin, British Virgin Islands up here. And this line uh, represents the center line of the eye. And so the core uh, is going to be right in here, roughly, this red area. And uh, then your tropical storm force winds out here in the yellow area. And so just watch as this goes through time. Now this will fluctuate. This is not precise. And it has these weird shapes to it because the different quadrants of the hurricane have different extensions of those wind fields. But that's not the main issue. The main thing to really focus on is where this red area uh, impacts over the next couple of days as I advance these frames. So this is 8 a.m. on Tuesday the 5th. So this is 24 hours later, 8 a.m., on Wednesday and it's hard to see through here completely but there's enough opacity that the unfortunate part is this looks like it tries to go right over some of these islands and then certainly the hurricane force winds are uh, definitely spreading over um, a lot of these areas after passing very close to the extreme northeast corner where is that let's get rid of the telestration and look again at the Google map here you know, if this goes across as forecast, then yes, some of these islands through here could get clipped by the core of this hurricane. And it's important to understand that if you're kind of waffling on whether or not to leave your dwelling, if it's not substantial or what have you, this is coming your way. And then finally, uh, at 8 p.m. on Wednesday, it starts to pull away, and luckily... Uh, the and they don't do the hurricane force wind projection at that point. I believe this would be the 58 knot winds or so. So this is tropical storm force, this is gale force, and then somewhere in the core here would be hurricane force, but those are not projected that far out from what I understand. Uh, but you can see Puerto Rico would be squarely in this northwesterly flow here of tropical storm force winds. And if it passes over some of these islands directly, you will still be experiencing southeasterly tropical storm force winds after possibly going through the very violent core of this hurricane. All right, so this is a great way to visualize it, and we can even make this more translucent so we can see through it even better. Uh, and then you can just kind of extrapolate it out that the center line and the core might stay away from Dominican Republic, but the possibility of tropical storm force winds impacting the area is certainly on the table. So let's look at the GFS, all right? This is the brand new run, it's still rendering out, but I wanted to show you what I've got out to five days, and uh, this is Irma down here in the corner, and I'll scroll down and you'll see it, and we'll run through this a couple of times. 
So there's Irma, comes into the scene, and it passes really close to, if not right over, some of these islands. I'm going to zoom in on it in just a minute. And then you notice that it goes right through the Turks and Caicos, the southeast Bahamas, skirts along the north coast of Cuba, but does not make landfall, and then it ends up in a position fairly close there to the Florida Straits, just entering the Florida Straits at around 80 degrees of longitude. And then you can also see, believe it or not, what would be Jose there, probably a weaker hurricane or strong tropical storm. We'll deal with that as it comes into the scene. Luckily, it's far enough away that, ugh, I mean, come on, enough's enough, right? Even for those of us who appreciate the incredible science and the tracking of hurricanes, um, sometimes you reach a limit where you say enough is definitely enough. Nobody wishes for this to happen to people and places and things, but unfortunately it does, and you just have to deal with it. So let's do that. Let's just zoom in, all right? I can go pretty tight here. I love being able to do this on the model and in Firefox. And uh, let's go back and actually i got to pause it. I'm sorry. Let's go up here and let's stop this. Let's let it start over and get to where we want it. Da -da 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 -da. 24 hours. That's where I want it to stop. All right. Dum -dum. There's 24. We scroll down. Now let's zoom in. And I should be able to use the left and right arrow keys and uh, go back and forth on this. So there's the center in 24 hours, and if we just move this forward into time, you see it moving across there, the, the center of the hurricane, the core, right in here somewhere. So just think of it like that, okay? So it moves on through. Come on, work with me. And, oh, it's just so hard to say uh, with all of these lines of vorticity in here, you know, the center somewhere in there, possibly, and you just kind of move it on through. And that's what's nice is I can go in and plot these the center of vorticity probably right there and we just move this on out of the way so what does that leave us that shows us where it was these breadcrumbs and you can figure that the hurricane force wind area uh, probably something like this if I tried to draw it in approximating it you know like that that would be the swath of hurricane force winds you know that's probably pretty reasonable and it comes real close to some of those islands uh, especially up here uh, this one and so let's go back to the Google map and see which one that might be uh, if it'll show up um, Oh, it's hard to tell. Let's see what zoom in. <clears throat> I don't know if it's this one over here. Let me go back to the GFS um, It was that one right up there. So it's east of st. Thomas and it's that northernmost island up there So let's see if it shows up on the Google Maps. There's st. Thomas and it's east over here I just, I don't see it on the Google map, but for whatever reason, maybe it's that one right there, that little tiny speck. Well, hopefully nobody lives there. The bottom line, we could do this for an hour, and we just can't. But, you, you know, it's coming for you through here. And the GFS with this new data from the upper air soundings and all the extra stuff to give it more accuracy uh, is bringing this uh, across the area, and you got to be ready for it. There's just no question about it. Uh, we can look at this again tomorrow, but it's going to get down to where we can just look at this right here, the satellite picture. The floater will follow this, and it'll scoot over so that these islands will start coming into view better. So tomorrow, we can just look at the eye and look at the heading and start making predictions on who's going to get the core. And before the lights go out and communication gets shut off, I can help you with that from afar. All right? So the rest of you... Uh, as this heads up towards the Florida Straits there, I do want to zoom in and just kind of show you. That's a pretty large wind field of a very intense hurricane. And so you folks here in the Keys especially, you know what to do. It's going to be time to leave. And uh, in the Bahamas through here, bad times ahead for sure. We have the metropolitan area of Fort Lauderdale, Miami. Yuck. And then we need to see, I want to leave you with this one thing, okay? This is extremely concerning to me. <clears throat> if if Irma is able to come more to the west and do something like this when it turns north, that could be, assuming it turns north, huge, huge problem with surge right here. So to save the property damage and the potential loss of life, it's going to be better for people as a whole for this to come right up uh, the spine of Florida, so to speak.
Uh, if it's going to hit at all, of course, the best thing is for it to just come up like this and take off. But we cannot sit here and hope this thing away. What I'm worried about is that it comes in uh, and makes the wide turn and then comes up, something like that. It wouldn't necessarily be fading off to the east like I just showed, but that's my concern. The west coast of Florida is way more storm surge prone, especially right down here and especially right there. So we really need to watch this closely every single day, every 6 to 12 hours, and I'm going to be on top of it. All righty? So look, i got to talk business just a little bit because I've got to fund the future of this. Obviously, a lot of people appreciate it. The social media response is overwhelming. And I wish that I was sitting on $100 million in the bank so I could do all of this for free. Oh, of course, we all would. But look, get the app. It's called Hurricane Impact. That's what it looks like in the app store. It's for iPhone. And it works okay on some iPads, but it's really developed for the iPhone. Uh, that's the logo. That's what it looks like. It's two words, Hurricane Impact by HurricaneTrack.com. When you get it, you will have access to all of this stuff that I'm doing and this is what it looks like on the uh, the news page. I can put these blurbs in. Uh, there's the news, the Twitter. All of my Twitter stuff goes right there. And then when we have uh, the field missions, live weather data, live cameras exclusively to the app, and, uh, of course, the tracking where I can put different graphics in uh, whenever I wish right there. So people seem to really appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate the positive reviews. A couple people said it sucked. That's fine. I don't think it sucks. I use it myself. I literally go in and I see when uh, this map right here, where'd it go? I guess I got rid of it. No, there it is. When this map updates, it updates in the app. So I go to my own app. <laughs> I'm looking at my map. I'm like, wow, that's pretty good, Mark. That was a good idea that you put it in there. You may also uh, support us on Patreon. And uh, I'm going to be doing our shout outs for the people who have signed up for that on Wednesday, so you guys are going to have your day in the sun, so to speak. And then the PayPal contribution, we've been with PayPal since 03. That's a long time. And you can send it to fund at hurricanetrack.com. I want to be able to do this for years and years to come, and I want to grow it. I want to get a staff. I want to build the app into what it can absolutely be, and I want to work on the Android app as well and make it up to date. Uh, and still be able to pay the bills, too. Trust me, they're going to come due. I appreciate you listening to all of that. I appreciate you listening to the first part. Hopefully it's helpful. From what I've seen on social, it is, and I appreciate that as well. Um, tomorrow, later in the day today, I am going to be on a radio station down in uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and um, it's called the Addie Otley Morning Show. I hope I said that right. And uh, I just can't remember the call letters off the top of my head, but uh, I'm going to tweet about it before I go on, so follow me on Twitter. And if you know that radio station down there, uh, listen in around the 8.30 to 9 a.m. Eastern Time hour. Uh, Addy, A-D-D-I-E, I think it's Otley, O-T-T-L-E-Y, I believe, 13.40 a.m., I think it is, uh, talking about Irma. So tune in to that, and I can bring some great information then as well. I'm going to bed. i got to be up in about five hours to get the kids ready for school and to get back in here and work for you guys. And then I'm getting ready to head to Florida probably on Wednesday. I'm Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com. Thanks for watching. It's time for sleep. I'll talk to you tomorrow later in the day, Tuesday.